Hey everybody, it's Nathan with Fluid Health and Fitness. Today we're going to tackle a common overuse injury of the foot, plantar fasciitis. This pathology typically presents as sharp heel pain with initial steps following a period of inactivity and or worsening heel pain with prolonged weight bearing. This is commonly seen in endurance athletes like runners or cross country skiers. While the cause of plantar fasciitis is multifaceted, it is generally known as a sport related overuse or maladaptive training injury. Possible contributing factors are increased plantar fascia thickness, fat pad compressive disturbances of the heel, recent increase in activity, range of motion deficits of the foot or ankle, increased pronation of the foot and or fear of movement behaviors. According to studies, most push through this plantar fascia-like pain and experience symptoms for one year or more prior to seeking out medical treatment. If you are like most, instead of waiting a full year with symptoms, why not learn how to prevent this nagging injury in the first place by balancing both local and global movement patterns in your body? If you have any questions on this or want to have a personalized program created for you so that you can avoid overtraining in general, please reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. As a reminder, we offer complimentary in-person and or virtual assessments and physical therapy options and would love to work with you. With that being said, today we are going to share with you a suggested exercise protocol that will help you to avoid overloading your plantar fascia and the surrounding tissues by addressing a few of the most common biomechanical imbalances around the ankles and lower extremities. This is certainly not an all-inclusive approach being shared today. Remember, the information presented here today is not considered nor is it a substitute for medical advice. With that out of the way, let's get started. To complete today's program, you can either use a percussion gun or a fascial release ball, a towel or firm strap, and an exercise band. Start off by releasing your calf, more appropriately named your gastroc and soleus complex. This is a common overactive and short muscle group that can lead to decreased ankle mobility associated with plantar fasciitis. Using the vibration gun, Trace a line from the top of the calf all the way down to your Achilles tendon. Make sure to work both the inner and outer sides of the calf, looking for an adhesion or a trigger point. A trigger point is a hypersensitive area that can be relaxed with simple light grade vibration. Using very gentle pressure, you can isolate the sensitive spots for approximately one to two minutes or until it becomes desensitized and relaxed. If you don't have a vibration gun, you can use a fascial ball to do the same technique aiming at creating a neuromuscular inhibition of the muscle. By applying pressure between the ball and the tibia, your muscle should eventually relax and once the sensitivity subsides, you can start to do a pin and stretch technique with a towel or strap with the knee both flexed or extended. That is being demonstrated here in the extended position. Again, approximately one to two minutes will do. Next, work on releasing the plantar fascia or bottom of the foot. This tight, often restricted fascia connects to your calf through the heel bone or calcaneus and Achilles tendon and can restrict ankle and foot mobility as well. Using the vibration gun, trace a line just below the heel bone to the base of your toes, looking again for an adhesion or a trigger point. Trigger point, as we said earlier, is a hypersensitive area that can be relaxed with simple light grade vibration. Using very gentle pressure, you can isolate the sensitive spot for approximately one to two minutes or until it becomes desensitized and relaxed. As always, if you don't have a vibration gun, you can use a fascial ball to do the same technique, aiming once again to create a neuromuscular inhibition of the small intrinsic muscles and fascia. By applying pressure between the ball and the bottom of your foot, your muscles and fascia should eventually relax and once the sensitivity subsides, you can do a pin and stretch techniques by actively lifting up your toe toward you. Again, approximately one to two minutes will do. Following these releases, weight-bearing stretches into ankle dorsiflexion are also helpful. 
for greatest benefit, incorporate the windlass mechanism of your foot with the knee both extended and flexed. If tightness or stiffness is present, these deficits can lead to excessive stress transmitted through the plantar fascia, which may eventually thicken, as we can see on diagnostic ultrasounds, and cause pain. These range of motion restrictions can also cause shortened stride lengths, thus decreasing your overall performance. Hold these stretches for approximately one minute and repeat two to three times. Now that we've released the overactive muscles of the gastroc soleus complex, let's move on to the underactive muscle group, the anterior tibialis. You'll want to lie on your back or sit down as shown here with your knee extended. Wrap the band around the top part of your foot and pull your foot up and in toward you. What you'll notice is that there is little to no movement of your knee or hips. We're trying to stay fixated around our knee and hip and isolate the motion to our ankle. You'll want to perform two sets of 20 repetitions, giving yourself one minute of time to recover in between sets. We will want to improve our coordination and integration of healthy movement patterns by performing a multi-joint exercise. Though it may seem simple, a single leg balance exercise, if done properly, incorporates neuromuscular control of your foot, ankle, knee, hips, pelvis, and trunk. Begin by standing by a wall in case you lose your balance. Next, dome the arch of your foot by pulling your big toe toward your heel bone. Try not to let your arch collapse during this exercise. Tighten the muscles of your hips and core to assist in maintaining your stability. Your balance and ability to support a neutral arch is very important. Overpronation or toeing out has been associated with increased risk of plantar fasciitis and other ailments of the lower extremities. If one cannot perform this simple exercise in a controlled environment where there is no dynamic activity or changes in the center of mass, how can one expect to be able to control this when much higher demands are introduced to the body? Hold this position for up to two minutes and repeat two times with one minute rest in between. Thank you for joining us today. Please like and share this video and subscribe to our channel if you found this helpful. Again, this session was dedicated to decreasing the likelihood of experiencing that sharp bottom of the foot pain associated with plantar fasciitis. With the technique supplied today in this video, your body will be able to move more efficiently and transmit the forces in and around your ankle and foot more efficiently, and better yet, improve your performance. In the case that these changes do not help, remember there are more individualized treatment options available like manual therapy or mobilizations and other modalities that a skilled physical therapist or kinesiologist may be able to assist you with. If you have any questions on anything covered today or are interested in a more personalized treatment protocol, please reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. And remember, think globally, not locally. Your body was designed to move, so stay in motion.